So now we're talking about Wudong. Wudong was, you hated it, I know, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was the birthplace of internal training. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool that, you know, when we got there, we met uh, Shui Young, uh, Master June, as we called him. And he was just really nice and kind and uh, a really cool dude. One of the things I remember when he demonstrated the form that he was going to be teaching us, and just to start his breathing pattern, you could see it traveling up, like the movement going up his back where he was breathing. That was so like uh, crazy interesting to me. Yeah, that's really cool. I like the Tan Lu Hotel, it was really nice. That was such a great hotel. I remember dragging my suitcases up all of those stairs. Right, and a lot of stairs. <laughs> um, and the scenery just every morning getting up, looking how beautiful it was, and going over to the Purple Heaven Temple. It was cool, our first uh, experience at the Purple Heaven Temple, they had a performance for us. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, they were so cool. As, as the, uh, you know, I thought Shaolin, these guys are, are top notch, but when I got to Wudong, I'm like, wow, these guys are really, really good. And the nuns, just, they were so beautiful and graceful, you know. Yeah, I remember walking over to the temple and we would see all the students training early in the morning. Yeah, it was cool watching that every morning, you know. Did we have coffee when we were there? Okay, <laughs> I was so excited when they served coffee. Because <laughs> we've been having tea the whole yeah. time, right? I mean, I love tea, but you know, coffee is my jam in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> It was just, it was just beautiful. Nice, nice, serene place. If I had someone to take there who needed to just disconnect from society, Wudong is where I would take them because oh, it's just yeah. so kind. I mean, so calm. So everyone's so kind, so nice, and just relaxing there. And you know what? I, I like staying at the Tian Lu Hotel because we were able to walk to the temple. Yeah. And that was such a part of our whole training experience and seeing the people along the way and saying hello. Right. Hello. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> it was just really nice to, to do that. And like I said, I just thought that it was just nice. And, you know, it's an eco-friendly, you, you have to have an eco-friendly vehicle to get up the mountain because it is one of their holy mountains there. So it was really cool to have that. One of my memories in training is all of the tourists that are there that are from China that are viewing the temple and they would stop and look at our group training because we kind of stood out, right? <laughs> and right. then we became the tourist attraction. Right, exactly. I remember that was, that was funny. That is hilarious. One of the things I liked, which I didn't expect when I was there, was going on the bucket ride. That was just, you know, that was... Fun. I'm glad I don't have a, a fear of heights because some people would get freaked out in a thing like that. Oh my gosh. We did not have smartphones then, um, but we had a little iPod with our music on it. <laughs> right. And I remember we listened to something like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like the, the soundtrack from that as we were on this cable car. And do you remember every time when we thought we were about to reach the peak, we would just start traveling upward again. It's very Taoist. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? you just have to be in the moment. Yeah, you got to li live in the moment. And that was one of the things I really liked. But not the one cool thing about it was when you got to the top. Now, you had to do these stairs first. Remember all those stairs? Oh, my gosh. And I felt like the old people were lapping me when I was doing <laughs> they it. They were. <laughs> it was like 500 <laughs> steps we had to take. I heard they've changed it. I haven't gone in a while. But I've heard they changed it. But it was really cool. It was beautiful up there. And then we got to the, uh, the top. The Golden Palace. The Golden Palace. Isn't that supposed to be like the highest peak? Yeah, it was like 12,000 something feet or something like that. It was, it was, it was, the air was a lot thinner up there, let's say yeah, that. Yeah, I just remember when we were standing up there, you could just see blue skies. It, we were in the clouds. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> and some people walk that every morning. They don't take the bucket rides like we do. They oh. walk the whole trip, and that just was part of the amazing uh, aspect. I'm glad they share that with us. Yeah, you know? one of my funny memories about being up there, they had this little building at the top at that temple, and it was called like the Lucky palace or the lucky hall and you had to walk through it but you could not fit through there because you were too tall mm. the ceiling was so low 
and it was completely... Was it lucky for me? <laughs> no. Well, you already are lucky. But anyway, that was just such a, a fun experience. It was completely black in there and you had to go through sideways because it was so small. Yeah, if you're claustrophobic or you have fear of darkness, yeah. you're going to have a hard time in a yeah, place like that. Not a that. place for you then. Yeah, I couldn't fit, so I, I, I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Accommodation. So Tan Lu Hotel, I liked that place. And it's right by um, the Purple Heaven Temple, so it was easy for us to walk there. And I liked it. I yeah, it. me too. I mean, the rooms were great. And in 2016, they had upgraded the rooms. Yeah. And so they were even nicer than before. Yeah. But I just, what I loved about that hotel too, is it's so private and you were able just to go outside and train and you're just in the middle of the mountains. It's just really beautiful. I often think that sometimes we trained more at that hotel than we did with our instructor. Yeah. Know? Yeah, I'd walk outside in the morning before the sun came up and you would already be out there <laughs> doing your internal training. Yeah, it's just it was just nice, serene. It was just comfortable. You know, whether it rained or it was misty, you know, maybe sometime I felt like I was in a movie. Oh yeah, for sure. So our instructor Guan, nice guy. Really nice, and he moved so beautifully, and he was such a good teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Yan, I think Yan upset him the first time we were there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You could see when Yan was talking to him, probably saying that he was a living Buddha or something. <laughs> and then Guan's, his body language just got really, like, serious and uncomfortable. Like, I, I think, I think um, Yan told him, said, listen, I can teach you how to beat Taoists, you know, how to probably. do, how to, how, I can teach you Taoism. <laughs> probably. That's not like something Yan would say. But he was a nice guy, and I liked training with him. And, you know, I look forward, maybe if we go to Wudong again, we get a chance to see him. Yeah, if you watch different videos on YouTube, you'll spot him in yeah. some of those videos. Yeah, but he was really talented, very, very talented. And I like how the last day he took us, we all got lunch, and then he was like, bye. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. I know. We were all hanging out, having a great time. And then he's like, okay, bye. And then he walks <laughs> away and we're like, uh, bye. I'm done with those crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're walking to the Purple Heaven Temple, you know, you just never know what you're going to see. There's people hanging out, shops. You know, what was your experience? Well, when we were walking to the temple one day, it was so like cloudy and drizzling and just so Wudong-ish. <laughs> and we run into this woman who's carrying this flute and she stops and says hello and she just starts playing. And so we just stand there and we take it in. It was <laughs> like such a cool experience. I love that. Well, that's what I love about going to places like Wudong where you get a chance to just enjoy every, I don't even want to say every minute, I want to say every second, you know? You're just not off rushing places. You're just enjoying the moment. And that's like their culture there. Yeah, and that is the way you take us. Like you always say, we may have an agenda, but it can change. So you just need to be in the moment with whatever we're doing. And I love that. Yeah, you, you have to have that. I think that is such an important thing. I think some people, they're so busy on the go that when they do this, they're like, wow, I can't rely, uh, believe how busy that I'm always, I'm always this busy. And and in a place like Wudong, you get a chance to hit the brakes and just move slowly. And, and that was um, really, really wonderful for me. The first time I went and then the next time we went, it was just an amazing experience. So one of the cool things was, I think it was our first trained, full training day. It was just like, it started raining and Yan is like, okay, you guys going to meet uh, Guan at the school. And we're like, S the school? I'm thinking of Purple Heaven Temple, but they take us to an actual Kung Fu school that they built on the mountain. That was a beautiful school. It looks so new. I think it was. I think it was relatively new. And everyone was there so nice. And it had been people training and people living there. Um, it was just cool to, to, to walk the grounds and enjoy that. So it was cool after all these years meeting Shui Young, walking to the Purple Heaven Temple, correct? Yes, Sifu. I walked out of the hotel and I was following all you guys and I see this car pull up, the building next door to our hotel. And I look and I look again and it's 
Sifu Shui Yang, and that is who taught us in 2006. And I called you over, and we said hello to him, and then we had our picture taken with him. And he was such a nice guy. He was even nice then, although in the picture he, look, he looks like, "Get away from me, you people!" <laughs> <laughs> and then some of the people on the mountain were really nice too. You know, when you'd walk into the shops and stuff like that. So it was just, it, everyone just was really nice there. Yeah, what's so cool about running into him, I took that form that he taught us in 2006, and I was still working it consistently in 2016. And so for me, that was a really special moment. Yeah, yeah, I can, I, I, I was, it was hard to tell you were enjoying that moment. <laughs> it was good. So one of the other cool places that we got a chance to train at was the Craig Temple. You know, we've seen it in movies, The Karate Kid, and yes. it's just a beautiful place. That temple's been there for a long time. It's called the Hanging Temple as well, people know it as. I am so glad that our guide, Yan, took us there. That's the be beauty about having a guide, too, because yeah. we had no idea where anything was. And that was just an amazing, memorable part of our trip. Yeah, I'm glad that we were open to doing that and going uh, and training there, and I'm glad that Guan took us there and trained us. It was really cool. Like I said, it's it's a beautiful place. It is just a beautiful, beautiful place. And just the whole time, you're just relaxed, you know? Yeah, really, you, you have to go. The pictures, even though they're so beautiful, they don't do it justice. I mean, this place is amazing. Right, because there's a feel to it. Yeah, right? totally. The energy there is just unbelievable. Yeah, and if you don't, you don't even have to train because Cheryl didn't train with us, and she was she felt the the, the, the calmness of yeah. Wudong, which I thought was cool. So, meeting Wei Lei, she was really cool. She made our Wudong uniforms. Yeah, those are beautiful, those uniforms. And she is just the most beautiful, sweet, kind person. Yeah. You have to, uh, I really enjoyed her. And she was so nice when Luis uh, got his uniform made and we left and went down the mountain. She went down there and brought him his uniform after making it all night, which was cool, which is very, very cool. She's really, really sweet. Now we had to go back down the mountain and then we stayed at this hotel and right by this hotel was an actual college, a Kung Fu college. Like, if you think it's crazy out there, this is a Kung Fu college. I think mainly Wudong stuff, but they had all kind of other stuff there as well. Yeah, I remember when we walked out, out of the hotel, and by the way, that was one of my favorite hotels at Wudong Town. <laughs> um, but we went over to this college, and you said, let's just go in, and it was dark, and I'm <laughs> like, oh no, we're going to get in trouble. Are you saying we snuck in there? Is that what you're saying? That's what you're telling everybody, when we snuck in? Well, you know they have cameras everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, look at these fools. <laughs> But the gigantic Yin Yang fountain, it was just so cool to see that. And the next morning watching everyone practice before they go to their classes and stuff like that. And then that night when they were having, remember they were having the, the lion dance, the drums and all that stuff. And it was just really, really cool. Um, I wish we could have explored longer, but we didn't stay in Wudong town for very long. I think next time we'll stay there a little bit longer so we can explore the school, maybe even take a class over there on something, just to get photos. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun hanging out in Wudong town and then got a chance to meet uh, with our friend, Shui Chow, better known as Master Bing. Yes, he toured us around Wudong Town, and that was just so nice of him to take time out of his day to do that with his daughter. Yeah, it was cool. He took us to the Jade Void Temple, which is beautiful. Um, it's at the bottom of the mountain. Um, this is as we were getting ready to come back, so it was very nice. And we've trained with him here in America uh, numerous times, actually. Yes, several and, different times. And we consider ourselves, well, we consider him partial family. I don't know if he yes. considers us. <laughs> But he's really, really nice guy. Uh, another one amazing at what he does. Uh, it's just funny when you go there, you start to see that these people are the true experts. You know, they didn't take a weekend course to become a Wudong priest or, or took a course to become a martial artist. They really live the lifestyle over there and it's really beautiful to watch. Yeah, he just started having Western students to his school there in Wudong since the first time since the pandemic. Yeah, it's 
nice. I, I hope to go back to see him. I want to see his school because he's opened his own school now. So it'd be cool to yeah. check his place out when we go back next time. And I, and I love that. And Wudong Town was beautiful. I bought, uh, I went to a sword shop and he, he took me to sword shop and I bought a Wudong sword. It's really cool. And all these years later, I start to figure out, wow, this is this. And this, all these things we experienced yeah. over there was cool. Yeah. I know we love Wudong and we're their weird cousins <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming from the West. And it was just an amazing overall experience. And I know we're summing this up here, but it's it's just so much we could this is another topic we could talk about for hours because we had such a wonderful experience and i know that you were like i, I want to go to, back to Wudong. like like we both were like that's the place we really want to go because we felt that we got time right to cultivate ourselves and train shaolin is great but the problem with where we were in shaolin is just busy all the time and Wudong is like you're at peace with yourself you know you're out there I definitely want to go back, of course, and this is just something that it really like opened my eyes and this trip was really life changing for me. Um, this is the birthplace of internal Kung Fu and it's just really an amazing experience. Yeah, I think if anyone ever got the opportunity to go and talk to the people at the shops or go to the Purple Heaven Temple or go to the Jade Boy Temple or see the college, I think it's just like you can't walk away from this not change no, and you have to take your time and sit down at the temple observe everything that's going on around you that's just so important right I mean if you close off to it then nothing will change you but you are definitely going to feel something when you're there all right we're closing off and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one